Hi, I'm Alex Ancona, Product Manager on the Frontend Experience team at Algolia. I'm thrilled to be on stage today to talk about Frontend along with search and discovery experiences and how at Algolia we've been approaching those two in the past years. So you, as developer, can more easily build UI that your user love. But before I move to the core of the presentation, let me quickly introduce myself. I joined Algolia in 2014 when the team was just a few people, being on an incredible ride since then, moving from a few dozens of customers to almost 13,000 today, and over 800 people on the team spread out over, around the world. My focus for many years has primarily been on the customer facing side, where as a solution engineer, I had the opportunity to help hundreds of customers understand best how they can unlock value using Algolia and how they can then implement intuitive UI into their application. Prior to this, I had the opportunity to contribute as a software engineer to the early days of the Amazon Prime Video app, which was a JavaScript code base running on connected TVs and video game consoles. Overall, I've described myself as a web enthusiast with a strong interest for well-crafted user interfaces. Today, we're going to talk not only about front-end technologies, but also about front-end experiences themselves. The one you might strive to build as web developers, but ultimately the one we all interact with as end users. And more particularly, the UI which helps us discover and find the things we're looking for. May this be on our favorite e-com website to shop a cool gift for best friend birthday happening next week, or just compare prices when being in store. Another time in the day, it could be to search for a cool song or movie we could watch. All our interactions on the net are made of passive and active searches. We're surrounded with content and it's never been as crucial as of today to be able to find, find the right thing at the right time. We'll cover the topic of our three parts. First, the challenges we observe online businesses to face and more particularly e-commerce businesses. We'll provide an overview of the Algolia front-end offering and how that one helps build robust search and discovery UI. And last and not least, an exciting product update all right, let's start with the challenges. Did you know that 43% of site visitors go immediately to the search box when entering an e-commerce website? Back to 2018, Amazon said it was already over 50% of our visitors. On its side, McKinsey observed that we're losing almost one fourth of our time for searching for what we're looking for. I don't know how you feel, but I found it's huge and leaves a big room for improvement. And then, when we talk about experiences in general, according to PwC, we observe that 17% of customers get lost after a bad experience and bad bumps up to 59% after a few bad experiences. I'm probably not telling you anything new here when saying that the end user expectation gets higher and higher in terms of UI and UX. This is something that large companies have understood early and were heavily been investing on. Like Amazon, who over the years have spent billions of dollars and has, if I remember well, something around a thousand of engineers working just on discovery, which includes search. So they can provide fast, relevant, and intuitive experiences. But that's not only true for Amazon, it's also true for businesses with other use cases and in different industries, like media or SaaS, for instance, such as Netflix or Shopify, where the UI is optimized for browsing with personalized recommendation or productivity apps like Google, Microsoft, or Slack build, just to name those few. And even in e-commerce, we witness at Algolia more and more businesses looking at offering optimized experiences beyond the main storefront. So their data can best be surfaced in different contexts, like when you're being in store and you want to interact with an interactive kiosk, or the companion apps, which get provided to more and more store associates. But also on B2B sites or website back office themselves. Because at the end of the day, those are all places from which end users need to get quick access to the content we're looking for. And those end users, guess what? They're the same as the one using the name I just, the services I just named before. And they have their expectation getting higher and higher. At Algolia, we believe that building great search and discovery experience should not be limited to a few, and great experiences should be the norm on the internet. Which is why we made our mission to empower you, the developers, to create those delightful search and discovery experiences. How do we do it? By exposing an API-first platform, 
that takes all the heavy lifting off your shoulders and which helps you directly integrate into your app, but also providing you with a full set of dev tools on top of that REST API itself, including the front end piece I'm here to talk to you more about today. At the first place, we created the API clients in various languages, both backend and frontend, which sits on top of the REST API, so you don't have to create your own. But then we quickly realized that we could do more to ease and speed up the development. So we started providing more higher level frontend libraries. So you can focus more on the experiences I will show you in a few seconds and less on the underlying complexity required to make those work. So let's now have a look to which library I'm referring to when saying frontend libraries. First of all, I'm thinking about instant search, which we introduced back in 2015 in a first version in vanilla JS. That one was followed by multiple flavors the year after, like React, Vue, and Angular. During those years, we also had the opportunity to improve those libraries, such as by adding the connector API back in 2017, which allowed our customer to even more easily create new UI components on top of the instant search library themselves. Of course, our investment has not been limited on web, and we've also been investing in similar libraries for native and mobile devices. Besides of instant search, we're providing an autocomplete library, which focuses on helping building autocomplete slash type of ad experiences mainly. Battle one has been totally rewritten and released last year, sunsetting for good the buggy Twitter type of ad version that we've been dragging for years. That one is made in vanilla JS and is compatible with React and Vue, including when instant search gets used. Finally, last year, we had the opportunity to release our recommend library, which is focused on adding recommendation-based components, such as carousels displaying related items or frequently bought together, but also trending items on a homepage, for instance. Overall, we're very proud to pour uh, and to have enabled over 10,000 of our customer with those libraries. Let's now have a look to the various type of experiences the front-end library I just presented us allow us to build. First of all, we have the instant search experience, after which the library is named after. Like on lacos.com, where I can see products results getting updated at every keystroke from the very first one, like when typing red polo. This allows users to narrow down their set of products in an immersive way. For those type of experiences, instant search libraries, regardless of the flavors, are the best way to go. But you can, of course, build those yourself even using the backend API clients I, I presented before. But of course, it would leave you with more work on your shoulders. Another type of experience is called federated experience. Same as before, but instead of searching within one index or one type of content only at a time, we allow end users to search against multiple data sets at the same time. So on Ubisoft, as a user, I can easily find games, products from the online store, but also news and FAQ entries. The instant search library here are the best way to go with. And when we talk about federated experiences, those don't necessarily need to take place on the result page like on, like on Ubisoft. Those can also take place in more autocomplete type of experiences, in which case the autocomplete library is very optimized to let you build that type of experiences. Beyond e-commerce, the autocomplete library also pours many site search like the one powered by Doc Search, which is here an example on Material UI, but among other website uh, documentation, like on React and others. That's for our experiences on desktop and on mobile. But as mentioned before, we do have customer like Beachbody also providing rich search and discovery experiences on connected devices like smart TVs. In that case, the search and discovery experience primarily happens via browsing with a remote or through voice search. Finally, here's an example of a recommend experience where on Zoom Shark, we can have product detail pages showing carousels of items that I can wear it, like related products, but also I may like for frequently bought together. So I can get inspired beyond what I just searched for and really augment my shopping experience. This list is not mutually exclusive nor exhaustive. We have many customers mixing those up and building things beyond what I just presented now. 
such as adding a store locator on an e-commerce website or a common palette in their SaaS app, if I just would have to mention two more examples. All right, we've seen the set of libraries we offer. We've seen the type of experiences that those libraries best enable front-end developers to build. Let's have a look to what do those libraries provide out of the box. First of all, the data layer. They really enables developers to don't have to worry about the communication with Algolia, providing a seamless communication with the API. And the library do it, optimizing the number of API calls sent, which is even more crucial in federated type experiences where you don't want to get like the number of HTTP requests going crazy. Then the libraries take care of the UI state layer, taking care of all the URL things, the state management, of course, being compatible with the various framework you may be using, along with supporting server-side rendering and many other things. A set of UI components, which can be customized and extended, such as a search box, a refinement list, the pagination, just to name a few, and that can either be used as is and customized, or you could, uh, for which you could create your own component, in which case, plugging directly to the data layer through the connector API. I hope it's clear to you, but ultimately, those libraries are really here to help you focus on the search experiences and discovery themselves instead of having to work on all the underlying logic and complexity that we've been solving with through this library. So ultimately you can save time and be more agile. If you'd like to learn more about those or try them yourself, don't hesitate to stop by the documentation or directly via the code exchange we launched last year and which now regroups dozens of code samples organized by type of content, type of experiences and languages. All right, let me move to the announcement part. So I'm pleased today on behalf of the world instance search core team to announce the release of the React instance search version. This version was previously known as being in public beta since last spring and is now globally available. So you can now use instance search within your React 18 application even easily than before, but even more importantly, you can do it using hooks. Right now it's available as a specific branch, but we'll merge it back later this year and bump the React Instance version to a major. What does that change from a code standpoint? As we can see, not that much. It just uses hooks instead of using the higher order component pattern. Along with the product announcement, I'm also thrilled to share with you that the Instance Search core team will be hosting tomorrow a live coding session during which you will get the opportunity to see how to leverage React Instance Search hooks, this new version, directly into a Next.js application. During that workshop, Sarah Dayan, staff software engineer on my team, will walk you through the creation of a rich experience into an e-commerce website, the kind of experiences we all love to interact with when we go on a leading e-commerce platform. So you can all have the key to replicate that on your own Next.js app. And as the web is not only about React, the team will also be hosting two other workshops. The first one showing how to integrate Instance Search.js, Autocomplete JS, and Recommend into an existing e-commerce app using a pre vanilla JS code base. For this, the team will reuse the same UI that the one used during the React Next.js workshop. A second one focused that time on Flutter and how we can easily add Algolia into your cross-platform Flutter application that you can run on web, iOS, and Android at best performance. Those will take place at different time and be available online a few weeks after the conference for the one interested in following more than one or just cannot make it to more. I hope you're as much thrilled as I am about those announcements and upcoming workshops. Finally, let me give you a sneak peek of what we've been thinking for the years to come. Please note that those are more themes we're looking to make investment into more than roadmap items for the quarter to come. But I thought that those would still be interesting for you to learn about more. First things first, our vision doesn't change. We want to continue to inspire you and empower you to build great experiences and even help you to create the patterns of tomorrow. How? We're going to, we're looking to invest more into providing more UI templates and cut samples tailored for various use cases and industry, which you can start with or just take inspiration from. So building great experiences can be done in less time. 
we also think to making what are offering a platform on which third party can contribute, such as partner, Algolia friends, or other services, in order to create new UI components and templates that other Algolia users can use. For this, for instance, we're thinking about providing more robust documentation on how to build new instance search widgets, autocomplete, recommend, a preferred distribution channel, maybe via the code exchange, or a robust design system that enforces you to build versatile UI components, which match the user UI in no time, even with limited design resources. And finally, continue optimizing for performance, accessibility, and developer experience. We know that those three points are key for you, and so they are for us. Can that be by improving bundle size so the library can have a little impact on the load time as possible? Improving the accessibility out of the box so provided components match the accessibility rules at best. And last but not least, make sure that those are as, as easy to use to customize and extend as it can be possible for you. It's time for me to wrap up. I hope you're as excited as we are about the shared vision, but also the new version of React Instant Search we'll be demoing tomorrow during the workshop. Finally, please do not hesitate to reach out. If you face limitation with our front-end libraries, UI components, code samples, or documentation associated, or if you just happen to have an opinion you'd like to share about how we should make those better in the future, my email is on screen. I count on you to reach out and help us design the future of search and discovery. Thanks for your time and your attention. Enjoy the rest of the conference.